Welcome to Cornwall. This is one of the longest continuously operated iron mines in the United States. My name is Mike Weber, and I'll help guide you through the history and the geology of Cornwall. We're standing here in Cornwall, Pennsylvania, the site where iron ore was mined for over 236 years. Peter Grubb initially began to mine the ore here at Cornwall in 1737 to prove that the iron was suitable for use in charcoal iron furnaces. The mining continued from there on, first by digging the ore out of Big Hill and then proceeding to remove ore out of uh, the areas beneath Middle Hill and Grassy Hill. The ore at Big Hill was pretty much played out by 1900. And then the miners continued on to mine the ore beneath Middle Hill and Grassy Hill. Now, as the mining continued, the individual pits coalesced into the large open pit that you see at Cornwall, Pennsylvania today. Eventually, the iron ore beneath Middle Hill and Grassy Hill got so deep that the company decided that they needed to deep mine the ore beneath the open pit. And so the number three mine was constructed to extend another 350 feet below the floor of the open pit. That mining began in 1921 and continued until the mine flooded in 1972. And about a mile to the east of the open pit, geologists found additional ore in uh, 1918 and that ore was subsequently mined using the number four mine, which also closed in 1972 when it was flooded by the storm waters of Tropical Storm Agnes. Mining ended in the open pit where it essentially had begun in 1973. And in June 30 of 1973, the last truckload of iron ore was pulled out of the open pit at Cornwall and trucked over to the concentrator plant here in Cornwall. A total of about 106 million tons of iron ore were produced from the Cornwall mines between 1737 and 1973. We're standing here in the copper room of the Cornwall Iron Furnace. The Cornwall Iron Mines for many years produced iron ore for the purpose of feeding not just this furnace but also other charcoal furnaces and then anthracite furnaces here in the Lebanon Valley. The ore that was produced from Cornwall was primarily of a particular iron mineral called magnetite. Now you would guess from that name that that probably means the mineral is magnetic and in fact it is because it contains sufficient iron uh, that it uh, has that magnetic property. Now when the mining first began here at Cornwall, the concentration of iron typically was about 60-65% so it was relatively rich. As the mining progressed, that concentration of iron decreased so that eventually the company that uh, operated the mine uh, used the magnetic property of the ore to concentrate the ore back up to about 60 percent. 
And so that process was carried out at the concentrator in Lebanon and eventually continued here in Cornwall when a new concentrator was built between 1960 and 1962. In addition to iron, uh, this mine produced other valuable metals, metals like copper, silver, gold, and cobalt. Now, lest you think that you can find native copper and silver here at Cornwall, it's important to remember that those metals occurred in very, very small quantities and they occurred in the sulfide minerals that were present in the iron ore. The sulfide minerals being calcopyrite and pyrite. So that with the processing of the iron ore that occurred up in Lebanon and eventually back here in Cornwall, they were grinding the ore, making it finer and finer. That allowed the use of other physical and chemical methods to concentrate the copper, the silver, and the gold. And so those concentrates were sent off-site for further processing to recover those metals. So no, you won't expect to find a gold nugget here at Cornwall. We're standing in front of the, one of the few remaining outcrops of iron ore here in Cornwall, Pennsylvania. What you see before you is a large chunk of iron ore that appeared uh, close to the top of the surface of the iron deposit and it rests directly on the trap rock or the die base which is the igneous rock which intruded into this part of Pennsylvania. Uh, if you look closely you can see sparkling crystals of magnetite and you can also see other minerals present which uh, made these rocks very attractive to Peter Grubb when he first acquired this land and began mining back in 1737. For 236 years, Cornwall mines have produced iron for the benefit of our country and for the world. A penny. You have any of these around in your house? You might not appreciate the connection between a coin, the penny, and Cornwall. But in fact, in the early years of mining here at Cornwall, the Cornwall mines produced a large amount of native copper. Native copper is copper present in its metallic form. And so the mine produced the native copper, which was collected here at the furnace for many years and then was sent away from here down to the mint in Philadelphia and also to Baltimore for additional processing. And that may be the reason why the room I'm standing in is called the Copper Room.